ever since 2015, Hyundai has brought us a, a vision of their pickup. Or should I say sport activity vehicle? That's what Hyundai calls itself. Um, this is the, the Hyundai Santa Cruz. It's been a long time. I mean, it's based on a Tucson. No surprise there. And actually, they really did a good job. I mean, it has a more bolder lines like the Tucson, the, the recently introduced Tucson. I mean, it's been trending right now. There's some people who like it. There's some people who just keeps being a snowflake and say that, oh, it's not a real truck. It's not going to tow much. It's not going to... Oh, come on, please. This is not a, a traditional truck. This is not your F-150 Ram or Silverado. Not even a, a Frontier Navara or a Hilux Tacoma. This is, this is a, a, a pickup that will fill up the niche that is, hasn't been, has been vacant ever since, since the first generation. Uh, actually, yeah. Actually, ever since the introduction of the second generation Tacoma on which it became a mid-sized truck. And since the Tacoma, Frontier, Navara, Hilux, Ranger, Colorado D-Max, BT-50, or even the Muso Sport pickup, the Ridgeline, they're, they're growing as if almost the same size as what the F-150s back in the 90s were. So I think this is a good indication that a class like this will prop up. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's a good light pickup truck. Yeah, haters. You will just say that, oh, it's, not a, it's just a crossover with a bed. Oh, come on. It has a bed. It does pick up things. Sure, it's not. It's designed to do. It's not going to tow a fifth wheel or uh, 26,000 pounds of towing. No, no, no. This is this is a real truck that you can use. I mean, going to Home Depot, going to some garage sale or something like that. And I mean, look at it. It's 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 honest. I think this is honest. I like I like honest vehicles. I mean, it doesn't pretend to be like oh, I'm a super duty, you know. No. No, no, this is an honest truck. I mean, in my opinion, this is kind of a, a indirect successor to the Subaru Baja back in the mid-2000s. Actually, I still like the Baja, although it was too early for its time and they said it was too expensive. And of course, the world wasn't ready for it. And this was the those were the times where crossovers didn't dominate the, the streets worldwide. And this is, this is a good... This is a good start from Hyundai. Although some people might say that this should have been a, an extended cab with a longer bed. But come on, the the bean counters at Hyundai will say, no, four-door pickups are all the rage in everything. I say it's okay. It's a good compromise. I mean, this is not targeted to the construction worker, to the hotshot trucking industry. It's not primarily meant for people who does construction work in particular. This is more like for for hipsters who wants to go to to mammoth brian head park city or do some drone shots this is a good this is a good alternative to a typical crossover suv i mean you can put your messy stuff at the back sure it has only a four foot bed doesn't matter it doesn't matter i mean it will serve its purpose especially to the crowd as you can see, of course, it's also not a hardcore pickup, just like the Ridgeline. That's the prime example for that. It can go, it can go fire trails like this. Some spots where you can meet your friends, and then just do some target shooting somewhere. <laughs> and I, I, I like it actually. It's, it's a good introduction to the segment. Hyundai has put its foot forward to bring a sub-segment from the mid-sized behemoths that are um, roaming around the streets here in North America. Actually, this, in my opinion, this truck has a market in South America, Asia, or even in Europe. Although it might not work in Europe per se. Well, d d it depends. It c it, they can market it. Unfortunately, there's only two engines with the Santa Cruz. 
I mean, they're both 2.5 liter four cylinders. They're both has uh, one is a the one with a non turbo has a regular six speed automatic, and then the turbo model has a DCT dual clutch transmission, well, which is okay. And the turbo version is like a fast one. It's like it ranges close to 280 horsepower, and it can tow the same tow rating as the Hyundai Honda Richline, 5,000 pounds, one which is decent and actually more than decent for its size. And the good thing about unibody trucks like the Santa Cruz and the Ridgeline is that they could carry higher payloads on which some of the American spec uh, mid mid-size pickup trucks are not particularly that um, known for. I don't know about the, the Hilux or the Navara overseas or even the Ranger. Actually the Ranger here and the Ranger the world has is almost similar but it's just different different diesel engines besides here in the US with the turbocharged four cylinder here. And I, I like it. The only thing I didn't like about the Santa Cruz for make it to make it a bit more of a world ready pickup truck is this one. This part right here. The taillights. I'm not particularly fan of that because there's no amber. There's no amber turn signals at the back. So meaning to say is that this is this truck is designed primarily for North American market, which is sad. I mean, Hyundai can bring this to Southeast Asia, Europe, especially in South America, on which it might be a little bit too expensive for South America because I will show you next the the trucks over there after we're done with, the, with this one. And that's such a shame. I mean, they could have just put a, a little amber right here, you know? just to just to make it globally compliant and yeah i guess design wise make it all red is nice why can't they just use what toyota used to do before make this a little pinkish red so this where the amber is at but i don't know american market it's pretty weird i like this touch the side step on the back it harkens back to the original chevrolet avalanche the first generation and the Cadillac Escalade or Escalade, you call it in some parts of the world. Yeah, this is. I like this touch right here. It has that caution arrows go going outwards. It's just red, all red. It I don't know. They could have just made it a pink or amber right here. And it, some people are pointing this out that oh, we cannot even fit a mountain bike at the back of the bed. Nah. Well, you know. It depends. I mean, at least it fits. That's unlike the Baja beforehand, it doesn't. So, so I'm pretty much excited for this for this truck. I mean, as you can see, the four foot bed it's pretty small ish. If you're a, a typical pickup pickup bro, like, yeah, this is too small. I gotta have an eight foot bed that I can put my Suzuki Cappuccino in the bed. Ah, oh, come on, man. Another thing about this bed is it's very versatile there's so many pockets there's one over here there's another one on the other side um it has it has a in-bed trunk in-bed um trunk like right here of course it's not as big as big or deep as the ridge line but the good compromise to that is the spare tire of the santa cruz is underneath here so unlike the ridge line you don't have to pop this um, trunk or boot open to to open it uh, to pull out the wheel or if you're a rich line owner you gotta pull out the wheel before you load some heavy stuff on top of the bed pretty much and as you can see um, they, Hyundai said that they will put some ex bed extenders and everything and one cool treat about this uh, Santa Cruz is that this part right here this is the bed cover and it retracts it's a retractable bed cover i don't think they showed it i think just a close-up of it so this is the the latch of it and this this thing retracts and you can just it also is so uh it has some spring in here 
and also they said that there's a six bolt that you have to unlatch and this is removable which is nice that's a good touch i think it's perfect for europe because you know some people who will like this truck and of course some of the interior shots it reminisces the the tucson at some degree and of course it has the rear seat under storage this is where the emergency stuff is at and then you got um you got some trays over here pretty handy just like most pickup trucks here in north america and i saw a tfl video where roman micah he's a big dude and he fits here pretty well and those seats the way they angle the seats it's not as like you're sitting against the wall it's not up straight it's pretty lax it's like a crossover so pretty good another nitpick that i would pick on this truck is that this part right here the partition right here doesn't collapse unlike the subaru baja and this one doesn't roll down at all this is like fixed like in fully enclosed so yeah that's kind of i know they're not gonna they don't want to uh, butt heads against gm for putting a mid gate system but at least they could have just put a partition or a hole right here a sliding rear window over here for me that's a, a little bit of a misstep for not putting a, a pass through here or even the windows but oh well maybe in the second generation as you can see the interior i'm of course some people will like the lcd screen here uh to each his own not, not my cup of tea but it's there and they didn't put too much emphasis on the interior because it's basically a, a tucson with a pickup bed <laughs> and then it has some all-wheel drive lock for the h-track all-wheel drive system which is nice he'll decide control over here of course parking proximity sensors has paddle shifts okay no problem and this is the top of the line 2.5 liter four cylinder engine 280 horsepower and uh, the torque says it's around 310 pound feet plus so pretty torquey of course it's turbo so that's gonna help a lot and of course the usual crossover features over here and here's here's a chart comparing the santa cruz compared to the mid-size bestseller the tacoma and then of course the f one of the first unibody crossover pickup trucks the ridgeline and of course the frontier as you can see it's a lot shorter of course cool compared to the stable mates the focus i'd like to point out here is the bed length it, the this too is like uh, i'm not so sure but let's concentrate the lower part here the longest length that you can put is 52 inches okay i was surprised that the ridge line has the longest bed length for a double cab crew cab whatever you call it in in the segment i i didn't know that i mean i thought of course the tacoma you got an optional longer bed for its double cab crew cab uh, configuration but they're comparing it with a standard size short bed with a double cab crew cab configuration as you can see the foot area per square feet sorry if, if i don't have time to put some metric numbers here but it's pretty small i mean like this frontier i think they're comparing it to the navara it's the d40 yeah there you go the d40 navara the second generation a navara frontier whatever you call it wherever you in the world the navara frontier the d20 body d40 body is small actually it's comparable to the santa cruz so just a footnote on that i know nobody's gonna watch this channel anyway but just to point it out yeah it's it's a it's a very nifty truck i mean this 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 is this truck is going to be the start of a new segment that is about to come in here in the United States because we're just waiting for Ford America to debut this. This is the Ford Maverick 
compact pickup truck. This is based on a Ford Bronco Sport on which is based on a Ford Escape slash Kuga if you're in Europe. And as you can see, this is the T6, uh, T6 Ranger or the current Ranger right now. I'm not going to go too specific in technicalities, but as you can see, the, the size difference between the two, this is the Amer American spec, of course, that you can tell by the taillights. But if you're the rest of the world, it's the same Ranger that, that you guys get in the Philippines or in Southeast Asia, Europe, Australia, whatever. And this is a nice size comparison. As you can see, I think they almost have the same length. But of course, if you put them side by side, it's a little cute little pickup truck. Nice, nice, nice. And this is going to be what it looks like on the side profile. Obviously, one difference that you can see from here compared to the Santa Cruz is the rear bed. Looks, this, this one looks long. And of course, this looks like a little bit more chunkier compared to the Santa Cruz. And as a size perspective, this is the European spec Ford Mustang. I can tell it's a European spec because there's no ambers on the corners over here. And it's amber at the rear corner. Plus it's white taillight and a little larger side mirror. So this is a European spec Ford Mustang. And if you can see the silhouette behind it is the Ford Maverick as a size difference. Must, the Mustang is no by means a small truck. Duh. It's, 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 the, the Mustang is a big car. Even you know, for global perspective. In the US, it's a decent sized car. But yeah, here's some more photos from its, from its pie shots right here. Another disappointment in my opinion. It doesn't have amber rear turn signals, which is a bummer. Ugh whatever but hopefully they can update it like what the f-250s and the f-150 is doing right now they're putting amber t rear turn signals on some of their models one thing i like about the uh the, the maverick is just it's more purpose built it's more of course it's not going to be towing six thousand pounds of car or weight though the front looks a little odd but they try to make it within the family or whatever they try to make it like butch at the same time small. One, one, uh, one thing that everyone keeps on griping about the all of these um, small pickup trucks is that they're not gonna offer uh, an extended cab with a longer bed. I think that's the sweet spot of any of the trucks nowadays, especially a lot of pickup fans who are just revolting right now. They want the days of the old Chevy S10. Sonoma, the hard body, the Hilux, first generation Tacoma, those sizes. They people are yearning for that right now. Like like a you could get a a Toyota Hilux with a seven foot bed with in a dually, you know. Remember those days? <laughs> All Ford needs to do is just to unveil it now. Because Hyundai started it already. So there you go. And the good thing about the the Maverick, it's going to share the same engine as the Ford Bronco Sport or the Ford Escape slash Kuga. It can be had a 1.5 liter three-cylinder EcoBoost turbo, 180 horsepower or 134 kilowatts or 182 PS, Peffer Striker, whatever you call it. And then it has 177 pound-feet of torque or 240 newton meters. And then the top spec engine that this rig might get is the 2.0 liter four cylinder EcoBoost slash or also known as Turbo that has a 250 horsepower, 186 kilowatts and a 253 Peffer Strike or PS with a 373 newton meters of torque or 275 pound foot. So this can be almost as a, a direct match. Actually, this is more of a of an in-betweener between the, the Santa Cruz and the Ridgeline. And this is a very promising rig. It has the right stuff right here. It has the pass-through rear windows over there. But this is more of a traditional pickup truck compared to the Santa Cruz that has an in-bed trunk like the Ridgeline. I, I just hope that they could offer more body styles. Of course, this should wake up other manufacturers, especially 
Stellantis, formerly known as Fiat Chrysler, yada yada yada. Stellantis should bring their fo- Fiat Toro in America. It's just waiting. It's just, it's already in, guys, this is already in South America. And it's perfect for, for North America, per se, because this thing is basically based on a, based on a Renegade and Compass, the Fiat Toro. Or, actually, this is perfect in Europe and in Asia or Australia. But if you're going to bring this to North America, rebadge it as a Ram. Ram 1000. Look at this, man. It's just it's just ready for prime time. Just give it a nice engine. Just give it a Tiger Shark engine and a, two, a multi-jet diesel in there. See, look at that. It has a Ram badge. Imagine this in North America to go against the Maverick, the Ridgeline, and the Santa Cruz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna remove the rich line of in here, but come on, Fiat Chrysler, come on, look at that Ram 1000. Come on, Stellantis, bring this. Just put an engine, and then put some rebars at the back and the front, and there you go. Mexico has been offering this for a few for a while now, actually. See, look at that. It's so ready for prime time. I think this is a little bigger than the Santa Cruz, but small. Yeah, it's just like a Mav- Ford Maverick size, as you can see. Look at that. It's just ready. This 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 truck is ready to be brought here in the U.S. or in the Philippines or in the the rest of the world. Actually, some Europeans would like to have this in in their shores, but imagine this is in California and some Mopar fans will just drive this, you know, if, if they're sick and tired of waiting for the next coming upcoming Dakota or if the Ram 1500 is just too massive for their for their lifestyle. Look at this, Ram 1000. It's it's just crying to to be brought here. The only problem is that I see on the Ram 1000 though is the tailgate. It's a swing out tailgate. It's not a drop down tailgate. So that might that might put off some for some people. So you can see the the dashboard is so Jeep five uh, Jeep Renegade Compass um, dashboard. But Stellantis also offers a smaller truck than this. It's more of a Santa Cruz size pickup truck and I think that this is what most Americans want and it's the Fiat Strada there you go this is basically almost the same size as the Santa Cruz in the four-door configuration look at this it's just perfect for American roads just just put some nice rebars here and there and there you go you got your Fiat Strada but of course, you cannot bring a Fiat pickup in the U.S. So, there you go. A Ram 700. Stellantis, if you guys are listening to me, bring a base model with the crossbars at the back and this model right here. There you go. Game over. You have, all, you have the market all to yourselves, Stellantis. If you bring the Ram 700 to the U.S. in this configuration, a single cab long bed if you want to monopolize the market and just kick hyundai and ford's butt on this offer this here in the u.s and game over you win you, you guys will win look at that this is what most americans want a small pickup with a long bed or long-ish bed you can you can put a motorcycle at the back on this thing see and then get your laramie model like like right there and then you got your tradesman over here with the black bumpers with the crossbars right there and then of course the the tradesman two-door stellantis you guys are just waiting in the daylights right now you guys can bring this like no problem i think you guys need to correct what the only thing that you guys need to fix is to put that bracket on where the Subaru Baja used to have yeah where you can like this I mean you could just click these two buttons and it just swings out so at least the cops will be happy on it because as what you can see right here you can't even see the license plate once the tailgate is down I think this whole piece right here goes down 
So I'm, I think they might need to re-engineer this a little bit. See, as you can see, if you put the bed down, the license plate flips up. So you can still see the license plate. That's a very ingenious invention by Subaru. And of course, the Outback has... Uh, the Outback... The Baja has a pass-through um, tailgate. So if RAM can do that, same thing as the Baja, that would be perfect. Of course, the US spec will be all red right here. As usual. Barf. <laughs> so there you go. My audio-only rant and rave on the Hyundai Santa Cruz. I mean, Stellantis is just holding up their guns and they can just introduce these two at the freaking same time. The 1000 and the... Actually, my suggestion, Stellantis, rename the Ram 700 as the Ram 50, just like in the old days. <laughs> and then, yeah, just ra name this as Ram 50. And then the Ram 1000, you name this as a 700. And then you reserve the 1000 as the upcoming Dakota. There you go. Game over. Hire me, St Stellantis, and you guys will make money. <laughs> Whatever. So... Use the 1000 name into the Dakota and then use the and they use the 700 name into the the Toro and then use the Ram 50 into this little chocolate and there you go thanks for listening guys I know this this video is running a little long so I'll see you guys later peace out